And you see, when it comes to leadership issue, we have long missed it from onset. We never appointed or selected a leaders, leaders in Nigeria that have been neutral. We have been able to grow to this orientation where we select leaders who are ethnic by ethnic by gods. We select leaders who are religion, who put religions are, are, are ahead of you know developmental strikes. And a country that is talking about religion, 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 ethnics, ethnicity can never develop. That is why you see Nigeria is where it is today. Because everything we do is about religion, is about ethnicity, is about tribe, is about creed. And for you to move forward as a nation, you must put tribe aside, you must put creed aside, you must put religion aside. And most of these leaders were around when, they fought, when, when we first had the war we had in this country. And this same set of people are still toiling that same line. Because the fact that their children have traveled abroad, they could put their children abroad. But one thing they don't know is that if anything happened to the unity of this country, that their children abroad are not safe. Because our own people abroad, we chase their children abroad to come back home here and come and face the rot that their parents have created. The Nigeria uh, a society abroad, we chase the children of our leader that they think they've hidden there. They will chase them back. This are grown. Okay, them. okay. If the if it's set, it's set for everybody. We are going to die together That's, or we live that together. Is it. That is what that it is. Just it. That is no, you know, the, 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 the thing is that, you know, this this bourgeoisie, this, uh, this African leader that are really not leaders, it were, let's just call them who they are, because they are not leaders. They are just businessmen running the, the, the territory for other people. You Very know, correct, sir. I, I want to digress a little bit. I want to digress a little bit. You know, they, are, they, they call themselves secret cows. You know, nothing mm -hmm. can touch them. That is how they are treating everybody like, like cattle. But correct. it is not acceptable. If you cannot lead, don't be in the position of authority. Africa mm -hmm. is looking for people that can lead them. Because now, right Very now, that is a strong scramble for Africa. Mm -hmm. A lot of international uh, uh, body are looking for a way to, re to rip up the continent more and more. Because Very there is well, crisis sir. in the world. If at this time we still don't, we still don't have leader that can stand for the people, we are going to go for another 100 years begging and begging Very again. We need a leader for God's sake who can stand up for the people, who can take the it's people sad. to work. We are known for this stupidity of religious idiocracy. It is annoying when we begin to think of Africa. We are sitting on the gold. We are living in the kitchen full of food, natural resources, green everywhere. But we are hungry and starving. That's the situation we are right now. That you are in the kitchen where there are food stuff, where there are food everywhere, but you are hungry. That's where we are. Africa and Nigeria have been so divided in such a way that brothers fight themselves, sisters fight themselves. Africa and Nigeria have been so divided in such a way that everybody is about me, myself, and I alone. And until we keep this thing called self in this continent of the world, until we keep this thing called self in this part of the world, we will not still move forward as a nation. A nation where you have to put the most qualified people at the hands of affairs. That is the nation we are fighting for. A nation where irrespective of your tribe, your religion, your color, your creed, doesn't matter. But what matters is your contribution to the table. That is the nation we are looking for. Not a nation where you bring a lawyer to come and head the ministry of our Greek. Not a nation where you bring a doctor to come and be a teacher. We don't want that kind of a nation. We want a nation where you have a leader who is decentralized, who is detribalized, who, who doesn't put religion ahead of every other thing. But it's so sad that we have a nation, a, a, we have leaders in Africa who what they think about is trade, is investment, is about their personal self, is about inheritance, living inheritance for the unborn generation. And we are trying to see how we can key that orientation so that the new Christ, the new set of leadership that is emerging should be a leader who brings a united Africa, a, an Africa where, an Africa that becomes an enviable society amongst nations of the world. That is the kind of leaders we are trying to form right now in this part of the world. I am trying to have an affiliation with some other young Africans in other countries, Gambia, and Uganda, Senegal, and other parts of the, uh, Africa, to see how we can come together. How do we forge a united cause? Because these guys at the hands of affairs right now in Africa, they are trying to give the, 
they, they greet this our generation, the orientation that they have. And the orientation they have is a wrong orientation that have brought us thus far. But we that are not ready to tell the same school of thought with them, we are trying to deviate from that pattern at which they are leading. That's the more reason why you see what happened in Chad of recent, the father died, the next thing they could appoint his first son to be the next uh, chief of, I mean, the, the next uh, uh, commander. He had it right commander. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's so it's so small. You just want you would like are these guys normal? The man just died, the mother has spent over three decades in power. In fact, the election he won, he forced himself on the people. He forced himself on the people. He never won that election. That's the sixth time in office. And that same man died. You brought his own son because his son, whether you like it or not, that same son had been groomed with the same school of thought of his father. The boy want to take over from his father because he saw the way the father ruled the people. Oh, he used to oh, want oh. to live there and died on the throne. Oh, oh, all right. Same okay. thing is happening in Uganda right now. A uh, mother had been in power. A mother came to the to, to, to the mantle of power that I want to see I can liberate the Uganda people going to 30 years on the throne. And the people have rejected him and he's forcefully ruling the people. And is that a continent you want to move forward? A man that is declining in potential, declining in what he can offer. Why not allow new breed? Why not allow new spirit? Why not allow fresh air into the system so that your own children can benefit from it? And that same orientation that Nigeria, a multi-ethnic country, a country full of massive potential, that same orientation that they're trying to buy in. But the truth is, it won't work in this part of the world because Nigeria is too, is too diversified for you to operate that kind of system here. That but because fire. they're not able to do that, that's why they're trying to put people who are extremists, who doesn't value life, that's why they're trying to put them, who people can bring wash their own followers, that's why they're trying to put them at the hands of affairs. Mm -hmm. All right, now, that is, that, is, that is one thing I'm trying to understand here too also. Uh, because uh, for us to uh, move forward, for us to be able to get uh, make any headway in this struggle uh, of a better Nigeria, uh, we need uh, uh, education, or we need uh, political education. A kind of political consciousness, if you like. And unfortunately, we can see, looking across Africa, not only in Nigeria, the, the administration in different parts of Africa do not want to educate the people about political consciousness. They want ignorant people that they can continue to manipulate. Whether you are looking at Congo, or you're looking at, uh, 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 looking at uh, it, just name any country in, in Africa, because it is, it is better for them like this. Now, we need society, we need organizations that educate the people about their rights. Because what it takes at the end of the day, you have to keep me, that is all you can do. Okay, you have one life, I have one life. If that is where it gets to, then it can also, we can also take it up at a point. But before it gets there, let's understand that there is a relationship between you, my leader, and me as a lead. It must be the same like it is in every other place. Africa cannot be an exception. In every country of the world, the leaders are responsible towards the people. We want leaders that can also be responsible towards the African people. The Nigerian case to the Nigerian people, Africa to the Ivorian people. So now, you coming from the society, uh, uh, civil society, what are the people, the young people, let's be specific, because those are the, that is where we actually have hope. That is where we have hope. What are they look? What are they thinking towards representation? Because of course, we're not going to spend all the whole time talking about uh, 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 patterning. We are looking, look, using it as a pointer to talk about the fact that the qualified people are not allowed into the position of authority. Is that the unqualified, the unprepared, the, those who cannot speak, those who don't even know what they are talking about, are the ones that are there. Therefore, they made the continent. They made the brilliant people. Intelligent people in Nigeria appear like Mumu. They should not be there. So what are this? What is the culture that is going on there? Educate me about that. Yeah, actually, uh, at this stage, there's something we call National Orientation Agency (NOA). But just like what we've said over the period, most of these agencies were just created. Uh, the, the full purpose why these agencies were created, you know, the purpose is dead automatically. Most of these agencies don't, they just exist on papers. People are just there to collect salary, resume work, so they could have an employment, resume work, collect salary at the end of the month, they go home. 
National Orientation Agency should, is an agency that was created that have a route down to the local government level. And their sole purpose was to orientate the people. Apart from their rights, on everything that is happening in the country, give the people the right information. We have the National Orientation Agency, we have the National Human Rights Commission, we have the Nigeria Bar Association, and we have the Nigeria Civil Society Organization and a whole lot of others. But the National Orientation Agency, which is on, directly under the government arm, they are dead agency. I don't know whether, you even, whether you've even heard anything called NOA. You used to hear of it. This is an agency that was created for the sole purpose to give an information, to give orientation, to orientate people about their right, about what they should do. But that agency don't even seem to do anything because the people that are there are people that were that were that are appointed just to reward them, not because they don't know the reason why they are there. They just give them an appointment for the sole purpose of rewarding them for the contribution they made to the emergence of the president. But for the aspect of civil society organization. We can do little, we can't do much. Like my agency now needs so much funding because we have network across the Federation, but we are restricted because we don't have the financial capacity. So most times there's little or nothing much we can do. Me as a national coordinator, I just try to do the little within my capacity because trying to keep the rest states where you have coordinators afloat, you need to most times to fund them for meetings, for seminars. You need to give them funding to transfer people from the local government to the state capital for to 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 give to, to hold meeting with them, to hold seminar, to hold symposium conferences with them. But when you don't have the much financial capacity to do that, you just let them lie dormant for now. Same thing happening to most of other civil society agencies, except those ones that have maybe international strong international funding to ensure that they keep their agencies afloat. But the government on itself, that is expected to ensure that the people get proper orientation into what they should do, giving them the right platform, giving them an enabling environment, giving them an enabling platform for them to come to power, for them to bring in their potential to the table, to help benefit the, pop, the government. The government only said key the potentials of these young chaps. A situation where a young chap knows that even the people that are riding on the mantra of corruption, they are doing excellently well. And you that have gone to school to come out with first class, there is nothing to show for it. You'll be discouraged about even education. You don't want to go to school because you see that somebody who is involved in crime activities is making, somebody is doing Yahoo, is doing illegal activities, is making it and even the one feeding you. What becomes of your orientation? He feed you first, the second year, and you're out of school, you just get roaming around the street. Mm -hmm. But someone who is involved in illicit activities is making it, is doing well because that's the, the environment that the country have created, the leadership have created. You feel discouraged about even doing the right thing, except you are strong morally. <laughs>